What? Oh, hold on. What's up, guys? It's your boy Seth from Coop Hoops, and today I'm back with another nightly recap. And today I'm only gonna be doing the big game, so I'll be doing my Blazers and the other close games of the night. So there's something I want to talk about. There's something I'll briefly touch on, but yeah, I had to watch football today, and my poor Seahawks got absolutely humiliated by the Los Angeles Rams with no quarterbacks. Russell Wilson had an awful game. The offensive line sucked, but that's a whole different story. Go watch NW Sports Catch if you want Seattle Seahawks news. I'm here for NBA. I'm still kind of happy. I know we lost. I'm in, not in a great mood, but yeah. I'll still make a video because why up, not? What's up, everybody? It's your boy Seth from Coop Hoops back with another video, and today I got my nightly recap. Now, there's a lot of games... And I'm not going to mention all of them because I had to watch football. Or I didn't have to, but I wanted to watch football in my Seattle Seahawks, as you see, the Wilson. Got absolutely humiliated on national TV in front of the Rams. Uh, Wilson had a bad day. The offensive line had a bad day. But if you want to know about football, go to NW Sportscast. Check them out. They're my other channel with my friend and my brother. We talk football mostly over there and some NBA as well. but And some other stuff. We just cover news. But, yeah, that's not the point. We're here for nightly recap. I'm still in a fine mood. I mean, good enough. I'll do a video. I still got to watch my Blazers, so... It's, it's a good. The first good. game I was touching on was the early game, the 12 p.m. game. And uh, I just know this game because, you know, my brother's a Nuggets fan, and I looked into it a little bit. And uh, so it was the Denver Nuggets versus the Philadelphia 76ers. And the 76ers had seven active players on their starting lineup. Uh, yeah, it was kind of bad. Uh, so, yeah, the 76ers had no Joel Embiid, no Ben Simmons, no Seth Curry. Uh, they had who else did they not have? They were missing... Uh, let's see who else they were missing. Let me pull it up. I mean, there was other guys. No Shake Milton. No Matisse Thibault. Like, there's lots of guys they did not have that were part of the lineup. So, it, their starting lineup was Isaiah Joe. Have you ever heard of him? Because I actually had not. I'm not going to lie. Tyrese Maxey. Good rookie. Davias Mathias. Don't know who that is. Danny Green and Dwight Howard. So, they had three real players. Maybe four if Isaiah Joe's any good, but... Definitely Davias Mathias is never someone I've heard of because he, he didn't have a great game. He did have 12 points, 5 from 13 shooting, and 2 or 5 from the three-point line. But, um, yeah, so this the Nuggets won 115 to 103, and in the first half, it was disappointing. The Nuggets were, in were like, close, and Jokic and Murray could not ever pull ahead of this team. They Tyrese Maxey dropping 33, hitting 39, hitting three threes, 18, two, or 18 from 33 from the field with three threes. Two steals, two blocks, or no, two steals, no blocks, six assists, seven rebounds. I mean, what a game from the rookie Terry Maxey. He's looking like a good pick for that team, and Tampa Bay gets a field goal right now. All right, yeah, he's looking like a good, good pick for that team, and he's they're shooting. But on a night with no stars, he is the star. He's got to create his own shot, and he did that. So maybe that's a good sign. But you guys didn't run expected to win this game, and the fact you were in it until the third quarter when they you now gets pulled ahead was insane. Uh, who else you have? Danny Green shot okay, two for seven from the field, but terrible from the field. Two for seven from three, but terrible from field goal percentage. Four for seventeen. Dwight Howard was four for six, and he made a three pointer, which is kind of crazy. He had eleven and eleven, good game there. But they just all got outscored. And the bench: Paul Reed and Tony Bradley were the only two players who came off the bench. Tony Bradley had you eleven fifteen. Paul Reed got you six and seven. So just it was tough to win without these guys. And the fact that you still were in it is good. And for the Nuggets, yeah, they're now above five hundred. Just I still do not like this win at all. Nikola Jokic, 15 points, 12 assists, 9 rebounds. Every much I have a triple-double. Uh, not a great game from him. I mean, he was still efficient. He just didn't shoot much, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter there. I mean, he played well. He he was 24 plus minus when he was on the court, so there's the bench that really got outscored. Uh, Jamal Murray, same thing, 14-4. and four. He played didn't he didn't shoot bad, didn't shoot much. He had 14 points. Gary Harris was your offense. He had five threes, 21 points, and three rebounds. Good game from him. Will Barton, same thing. He had 14 and three. Good game from him. Paul Millsap, efficient. Not that efficient. Nine points in 22 minutes. And on the bench, we had Monte Morris, get you 12. Jeff Green, or Jermichael Green, get you 12. PJ Dojo, get you 12. Frozen Kampazoya, get you three. Or no, 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 no. He got you three. And uh, Isaiah Hardenstein, get you five. So, And then you got your rookie, RJ Hampton, gets in playing time as well. And Bull Bull did not. Oh, Bull Bull did see the floor. He didn't play much. I think you should get him more time, especially in a game like this where the Sixers have no players. You just get your young guys' time, and you'll be good there. But at least they pull out the win. I just didn't look great for them, but it's it's good. They pulled out the win. They're now five and four, starting the season one and three. But it was a it was a nine point game at halftime. 
maybe even less. So I didn't watch most of, much of this game, just a bit. So that's mostly just stat based and kind of what I saw in the highlights on YouTube. So yeah, right, guys, we got another NBA game that's over. It is the Indiana Pacers against the Phoenix Suns. The Suns are now seven and three, coming off a tough loss to the Pistons. They win this game against a good. Now seven and or six and four Indiana. I think they're six and four Indiana Pacers team, and uh, this was a good game. I uh, didn't watch all of it, but it still was a good game. I watched the second half especially, and uh, just down the stretch, um, the Suns were up. But then uh, in the fourth quarter, with under a minute left, Brogdon hit a three. He made it close, and then Paul made a jumper. Brogdon hit another three, and then they had the foul. And after that, Mouse turned his head up. Lay the layup towards the end of the game. And that ended at 125-117. It was a great game. And I'll start off, I was talking about Brogdon. 22 more points with 3 for 6 from 3 and 7 for 20 from field goals. He's been playing very, very well to these last... I mean, this whole season, actually. He's looking like a great point guard. Could be an all-star. Sabonis played better than him tonight, though, with 28 and 22 rebounds. That is a big man type of game. You ask him every night. He shot 4 threes for some reason, and he missed all four. And he turned the ball over three times, so not great, but he was efficient. He didn't miss four free throws. Besides the free throws and threes, he was pretty efficient. Also had four assists, so that's just a good big man game from you. Looking like a big man passer as well. Getting all those rebounds, snagging up the boards, and just being a great post player like he is. Uh, so, I mean, tough loss though, but they had, they had people shine. Miles Turner, got you 15 and 10. He's hitting his threes. That's what you're asking for Miles Turner every night. He wants You want him to be a stretch, you want him to stretch the floor. But, unfortunately, you couldn't pull it out. And on your bench, the Holiday boys... Uh, once again, Justin Holiday outplayed Aaron Holiday for the second straight game. Why did they start an Aaron, Aaron over him? I don't know. 17 for Justin. 3 for Aaron. I guess Aaron didn't shoot it much. Holiday, Justin shot a lot. And Doug McDermott got you three threes, or two threes, and didn't miss a shot on the bench as well. But they cannot pull down out the stretch. And the Suns, a big part of that was Macau Bridges, your youngin, second year player. He's playing, as I'll just talk about them both, and Cam Johnson. So they're both playing so well. They're kind of been switching off the starting lineup with Jay Crowder and each other. But uh, yeah, they're both playing insanely good basketball. Macau Bridges had 35 points, 6 from 8 from 3, 12 from 18 from the field, 4 from 4 from free throws. Also had a block, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists. He just played great basketball. I mean, that's what you're asking for him. He, he, would, he wasn't missing his threes, and he was stretching the floor, playing defense. Like, he was drafted for his defense, but if he can get you... 20 points a game. That is such a great draft pick. Such a valuable piece in this Suns team if they want to make a deep run this year or even next year because they still have them on rookie contracts. As well as Cam Johnson. He had a great game last night. Tonight, another good game. 16-4 and four efficiency. Four threes for him as well. So just good games from both of the young guys, especially Mikal Bridges. Career high, 36 points. Shine tonight in this win over the Suns. Of course, Devin Booker's going to do his thing. 25 points. Did not shoot the three ball well. One for five. But uh, he still did well. Seven assists. Played back a little bit. You saw Chris Paul, 15 and 10. I don't his best game of the year points-wise. And he still is running the offense like he does every night. Averaging around 12 points a game. He shot efficient. Didn't make his threes, but that's okay. Jay Crowder, not a great night. Two for seven from the field. Both of them were threes with 10 points and some free throws. And as well as who else you got scoring. You got Javon Carter scoring 10. And Langston Galloway after a great night last game, only scoring three tonight. Good one for the Phoenix Suns there, pulling this one out. They're now 7-3, bouncing back from a tough Pistons loss. And uh, they beat a good team in the Pacers. So this was a good game, two good teams. And I'll expect to see them both in the playoffs. And I'll keep reacting to their games. Also, I feel like the Suns play every night. This is kind of a random side topic, but I, I feel like I'm always talking about the Suns for some reason. Okay, I don't next, know. we got the Charlotte Hornets coming off a win over the Pelicans, taking on the Atlanta Hawks. 4-4 four and four coming into the game for the Hawks. 4-5 and five coming into the game for the Hornets. And the Hornets pull out two straight wins to go up to 5-5. Five and five, Beating the Atlanta Hawks 113-105. to 105. I watched the end of this game once again. I, I, had, I watched a lot of football today because it is a football day. So I'm sorry about that. I'm still going to give you a video though. So be happy at least if you're going to watch this video. Uh, down the stretch, uh, the Hawks tried to make it close. It was a good game and a half. But in the third quarter, Horn or I guess early fourth, Hornets pulled ahead. Lamelo with a great night. He had a triple double. Second straight game of or last game he was a rebound or assist short. This game 22, 12, and 11. Three for five from three. Nine for 13 from the field. A steal. Only one turnover. He was efficient. He controlled the ball. He ran the offense, and he was their playmaking and even their scoring tonight. Terry Rozier got you 23 as well in your starting lineup, shooting fourth, hitting four threes. PJ Washington same thing. 22. 
And uh, Gordon Hayward, a quiet night, 13 points, shooting efficient. Bismack Biombo, your other starter, 4-7, and seven, not great from him. He didn't shoot the ball at all, though, so not big of a deal. Devontae Graham continues to struggle. I'm not sure what's going on with Devontae Graham. He was 1-5-3, for 1-6 for from the field, only attempted 1-2 which is kind of ridiculous. He did, and he was he did six straight from the free throw line. He got to the line a little bit, but I don't know what's going on with him. Last year he was super duper not efficient, but last year he was super good. Like, not good, but like he was a good young player. People thought he had to promise. He started every game this year, and he's not lived up to the hype at all or expectations. I'd say not a hype. He should be making his threes. That's what he's out there for. But if he can't, Lamelo's going to go right into that starting spot in no time. And Miles Bridges had an off night as well, only two points over four from the field. Cody Martin had a good game, threw down a monster slam, 15 points, 6 for 9 from the field. Or is that Caleb? I don't even know. One of the Martins got 15. One of them got three in one shot attempt. So, oh, yeah, 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 that was Caleb, or Kobe Mar Cody Martin, I think, got the 15-point game. And they pulled this one out over the Hawks. And down the stretch, uh, they made their shots to close it out. Hawks made it close towards the end, made it to eight. Young made a couple shots for the end of the game, but... The Charlotte Hornets are now five and five, and for the Atlanta Hawks, they now fall after a three and one start to four and five. Trey Young, another quiet bad game. Fifteen points, ten assists, not bad, but not good. Over five from three, five for nineteen from the field. Very inefficient. He hit his free throws, but four turnovers. He just did not play well. Plus minus was just zero. So when he was on the court, it was a tied game. But he needs to play much better. In thirty-seven minutes, you can't be missing. 14 shots, only making five. 15 or 15 points is not acceptable from Trey Young. Uh, I thought maybe an MVP candidate, definitely an All Star, but he's got to turn it up and go back to his 25 points a game. DeAndre Hunter got you a good game, 20 and eight. Bogdanovich finally started, only got you five points, one for five from three. Not good from him. Not contribute to the win at all. Clint Capella got you seven and 13, two for six from the field. Not a good game from him either. You just had a lot of your starters just didn't play well. Only John Collins, 12 and 10. And 120 and 8 were actually good games for your starting lineup. On the bench, Cam Reddish got you buckets, 21 points, hitting four threes. He attempted 13 threes, only hit four. That's not great efficiency. That's around 30. Uh, my math's not very good right now. 30 percent. So not great there. But and then when you had Solomon Hill and Brandon Goblin in the game, you got outscored by 12. So not good to run that deep of a bench. I'd say probably cut it back to. Four or five. Like they, I guess they ran six, so not that big of a deal. But they need to pull out these wins against teams that are around their skill level if they want to make the playoffs as an eight seed. And I thought they might, but as of now, they're four and five. I don't think they will. I think this team will go back to last year, maybe be a bottom team in the Eastern Conference. They can they can still turn it around easily though. Trey Young has that capability. They just need a they need to the Washington Wizards versus the Miami Heat. I think the Heat are now five and four. Hold on, let me look that up. Four and four, and the Wizards fall to two and eight. One hundred twenty-eight to one hundred twenty-four. The Miami Heat pulled this one out over the Wizards. They were up. It was close at halftime. They went up big. Wizards bounced back like they do every night. I feel like, and I mean, this team is gonna be in games. They're just not gonna win them. That's their problem. They can't close out a game or pull back or close out the comeback. They can't capitalize on this. They come back and they just blow it at the end and lose by around five or four or ten every night. Uh, down the stretch, it was 127 or 120, yeah, 127 to 122. Troy Brown missed a three, and then Bam made his free throws, and then Troy Brown got a put back towards the end of the game. So that just sealed it right there. They had a chance to hit a three and then foul. And for the Miami Heat, Tyler Hero got you buckets, 31 points, 12 for 20 from the field. Did not shoot the three ball well, one for five, but he had six more free throws. That's why he scored so much, 31 points, nine rebounds as well, which is I mean that's really good if he's rebounding the ball. That's good. Jimmy Butler had a good game, 26 and 10, 10 for 18 from the field, and 6 for 6 from free throws. That's good to see Jimmy making his free throws, hitting his shots. He only shot one three, which is good. You don't want him attempting that many threes. Good game from him, nine assists as well, near triple double, one assist shy. Duncan Robinson, seven and five, did not shoot the ball well. He's two for eight from three. That's all he shot. So you need better from your sharp shooter there. Kelly Olynyk continues to have a good season, 18 and six, efficiency, hitting the three ball well. Bam had a quiet night, shot the ball four times. 9 points and 16 rebounds. Why is Bam getting the ball four times? I don't know. But he did get fouled quite a bit. So, still, Bam needs to be, get more touches. Honestly, you need to give Bam and Bio more touches. He is your star. Or he is your rising star as long as Tyler's hero. Goran Dragic got 21 on the bench. I'm surprised that they're starting Dragic. I think they could run a lineup of Dragic, Butler, Hero, Robinson, and Bam. Take out Olenek. They could run small ball. And not really small because Robinson's still 6'8. But I just think it's fine. He's being your spot player on the bench. Avery Bradley 
Five points, three rebounds. He's that he's there for his defense. He did not shoot the ball well tonight. He needs to be better than one for five. He's your three and D guy. But he needs he's he's out there because of his defense and he'll make you plays. He'll impact the game, but he needs to make his three point shots to get meaningful minutes. Iggy shot it three times, made one, three points. Precious Achua, your rookie, three for four from the field with seven points, and Myers Leonard, one and four. And other than that, no one scored, but you had a great game. You you played not very well defense, but you had great scoring. Everyone was scoring. You were, didn't miss many threes. I mean, I guess, yeah, you kind of did, but you made all your free throws, which helps, and you pull this one out. So you guys are 4-4. Four and four. You needed this win. You got to win over the bad ones. So this is how you guys are going to make the playoffs again. And Danny Avija had a good game, finally. He's a rookie. Uh, I think it was the seventh, ninth pick in the draw. Ninth. I think he was the ninth. Yeah, ninth pick in the draft. He had 20 and 5, five threes as well. Rui Hachimura, your second year player, got you 17 and 5. Or is he a third year now? I don't even know. I feel like he's young, but maybe this might be his third year. Jerome Robinson got you 12 in the starting lineup. Raul Nito got you 6. Thomas Bryant got you 0. And this was a no Westbrook and no Beal Knight. That's the even worst part for the. But uh, for the Heat, no, I was gonna say the Butler. Okay, the Heat to only pull out a four-point win over no Westbrook and no Beal. Both of them rested. I think it might have been COVID or it might have just been a little management. Beal had coming off hundred and one points in the last couple games, and Westbrook coming off triple doubles almost every night. So Thomas Bryant, what? Thomas Bryant got injured two minutes and got no stats. So yeah, he must have gotten injured. Ish Smith got you nine and three and seven on the bench. Garrison Matthews got you 22 on the bench. That's a good spark plug. Four for seven from three. Robin Lopez and Mo Wagner both got you 13 playing that backup big man or starting big man because of Thomas Bryant's injury. But I don't expect you to win a game without Westbrook and Beal. I don't expect you to win games with Westbrook and Beal. You're not a great play. You're not a great team. You're not a playoff team. But you, you almost pulled this one out. So it's a good sign for Wizards fans that you're in games with good teams without your stars. You really need to turn the season around. You need to start getting a win streak. You need to get the momentum going. You're now 2-8. and eight. You need to turn it around. You need to probably win five in a row to get yourself back in that hunt and f have confidence going into this stretch of the season, middle of the season. So, yeah, you need to turn it around. Good win for the Heat, but not even really good win.